do video game genres actually exist? I mean, of course they exist, at least as a concept. There is a huge list of them on Wikipedia. But are they useful to categorize games? And why do we even want to categorize games? Genres have always been a complex issue, not only for games, but also for music, books, and movies. Have you ever read Moby Dick? Moby what? It's this magnificent adventure that makes you want to jump onto a ship and sail into the unknown. But it also contains pages and pages about scientific facts of whales, classification of whales, anatomy of whales, what whales eat, mythical interpretations of whales. So how do you categorize a book like that? Or maybe a movie like The Truman Show, where you have a comedy actor in a dramatic situation with a meta-cinematographic plot. Shouldn't that require more than just a single label? Well, something similar happens with video games. Consider Mario Maker. The brilliance of Mario Maker lies in the fact that Nintendo understood that if you give Mario mechanics to any game designer, they will take it beyond the platformer genre. In Mario Maker you can create puzzle levels, speedruns, survival, multiplayer versus anime shooters, but all of them created with platformer assets and platformer basic mechanics. Or a game like Fez, where you have to move from one platform to another, but also have to resolve puzzles and overcome the challenge of rotating different 2D views in a kind of 3D world. Or Slade Spire, a combination of deck building card games with the progressive difficulty and variety of roguelikes that has this aesthetic of a fighting game. So if everything can be this flexible and dynamic, why even bother trying to understand something so steady and fixed as genres? Well, because genres, like all kinds of categorization systems, can help you to give order to a chaotic world. If you have an extremely distracted mind, being able to recognize one genre from another can make you focus on what type of game you would like to create. Or it could also be the opposite. If you are too creative and want to constantly bled ideas, thinking too much about genres might limit your creation process. The approach you take is given by the way you work. However, it's always good to know how to name certain things. In these times dominated by AI, knowing how to use the right words to prompt, and to communicate in general, of course, is a skill that will save you lots of time and work. To have a good output from ChatGPT, you need to structure a good input. The game maker platform we are developing at Rosebud AI works the same way. If you want to build a game like this, you will need to put the idea you have in your mind into words. And if you are a beginner game developer, understanding the possibilities and limitations of different genres can give you a solid starting point. So let's talk about some popular genres that you might choose to tackle in your game development journey, and the unique advantages and challenges associated with each of them. There is a consensus that platformers are the most recommended genre for an indie game dev who's starting. There are countless tutorials and resources available online specifically for platformer games. And since platformers are mostly about guiding a character to jump between suspended platforms, avoid obstacles and combat enemies to progress, they allow you to understand basic game mechanics such as physics, character movement, level design and collision detection. Good level design is crucial on a platformer, and the main challenge could probably be creating the right difficulty. It's important to make the game challenging enough to be engaging, but not so difficult that it frustrates the player. Adding a creative twist to the genre can also be complicated. Take Celeste, for instance, a platformer that offers a precise gameplay and that also handles really interesting mental health topics. Or Super Meat Boy, with its fast pace levels filled with obstacles that test both the skills and the patience of the players. Or maybe Ori and the Blind Forest, a deeply emotional game with a beautiful art style that is usually also categorized within the Metroidvania genre. I would say that Metroidvania genre is an extension of the platforming genre. It combines precision skills with exploration, backtracking, and progression through the acquisition of game-changing abilities in a large and interconnected world. The term Metroidvania is a blend of Metroid and Castlevania, two pioneering franchises in the genre that showcase gameplay centered around this kind of exploration and gradual power acquisition. Developing a Metroidvania game can be an intimidating task for a solo developer, so it's not something that I'd recommend starting with, unless you really want to test your skills. 
Creating an interconnected world with multiple paths and abilities requires significant planning. It also requires a lot of time to create unique assets for their expansive scenarios. Of course, AI is changing that. Generating characters, items, and backgrounds just by typing what you want is an incredible boost to starting developers. Just check this AI app to create gaming assets called Pixelvibe. And if you want to know how I made all of this, give us a like on this video. RPGs creators will also benefit from this. In RPGs, players make decisions that affect the narrative or gameplay, and their characters grow and develop over time, often through a system of experience points and leveling up. Creating the assets and writing the extensive dialogue required in RPGs can be resource intensive, so AI will help with that as well. A great example of how a single developer can create a rich and engaging RPG experience is Undertale. In Undertale, with its unique combat system, players can choose to spare enemies instead of defeating them. Stardew Valley also incorporates some RPG elements, such as character customization, questing, and skill progression. But in this case, we are talking more about a farming and life simulation game. This name says it all. A simulation game simulates real-world activities, and they often involve managing resources, making strategic decisions, and controlling characters or vehicles in a realistic setting. Simulation games can appeal to a wide range of players, and they can also be educational, teaching about the systems they are simulating. Despite the fact that these games often involve managing a large number of resources and require extensive UI design, there are ways to create small, simple, and fun simulation games. Take Neko Atsume, Kiri Collector, as an example, a mobile pet simulation game that revolves around the simple concept of luring cats to your backyard and watching them play with toys you provide or the highly acclaimed Papers, Please, which simulates the work of an immigration officer at the border of a fictional dystopian country. With this simple premise, the game creates a compelling narrative and moral dilemmas with a huge attention to detail. Seeing how Papers, Please turn a seemingly complex idea into a brilliantly executed small-scale game might inspire you to think about how to simplify and adapt other game genres. And this brings us to another genre that can appear quite daunting at first glance, sandbox games. Sandbox games can be tricky, they offer a lot of creative freedom, allowing you to build a unique world with its own rules, and because of that freedom, it can be challenging to limit the scope of a project that requires a deep understanding of game programming and design. Despite these challenges, sandbox games have given birth to something quite amazing, and that's modding communities. These communities are filled with dedicated players who take the base game and reshape it, often leading to transformative gameplay experiences. Take Minecraft, for instance. Minecraft. The modding community in Minecraft delivers from small tweaks that add new blocks and creatures, to complete overhauls turning the game into a space exploration simulator or even a full-fledged fantasy RPG. These mods let us, the developers as well as players, explore and learn from a variety of creative approaches within the game's sandbox environment. And with the rapid progress in artificial intelligence, this kind of game development is bound to become even more big and accessible. There are a lot of game genres that are simpler for a starting game dev, Visual novels, clickers, match three, puzzles. Those are great to start with, but why not also dream big and try to see how much you can expand the definition of a genre? The games of the future will be designed by you, so start creating, keep creating, and keep learning. You will see that the possibilities are limitless. And if you have enjoyed this video and want to go deeper into game creation, join our Discord community. Also, be sure to sign up for the waitlist for our AI Game Maker platform. It will soon be accessible to help you in creating fantastic games more efficiently. And if you are looking to enhance your game creation process right away, do give Pixelbyte AI a try. It's a brilliant app that could greatly aid for creating game assets. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more insights and updates, and leave us a comment if you want to see a second part of this video.